time of crisis or an SHTF, a lot of people uh, just concern themselves with criminals, people who want to do bad things and break the laws and whatnot. However, there is another threat, and we have discussed this briefly in this channel. And that threat is in the form of those who are not prepared. That threat can be a friend, can be a neighbor, can be a mother, can be a father, a sister, a brother, an acquaintance, can be anyone who does not prepare. Why I'm saying that they are a threat? Well, criminals do come with ill intent. Criminals do come to take what is yours by force, to cause you harm by force, and they don't care. Well, this, uh, this that I'm speaking of now, uh, those, these are people that you know, and these are people that may not have any ill intent towards you in normal times. However, in a crisis, well, that is a different story. In an SHTF, that is also a different story. Now, these people are in survival mode. And in survival mode, you do things that you never thought you were going to do in normal times. Now, let's say that something happened and your neighbor refused to prepare. Although you, you know, talked to that neighbor several times and said, Hey man, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's go fishing. Let me show you how to fish. Can you put away, uh, just put away a few cans of tuna, this and that, uh, you know, just in case something happened, get a, a, a cheap generator. It, it doesn't matter if it's loud. It doesn't bother me as long as you have power. Well, they refuse to do all of those things. And that includes family members. They refuse to do it. Now, it's a crisis. Now, in an SHTF, now they're looking to see how can I have a resemblance of what my life used to be. They see you with power. They see you eating food. They see you with heat in your house. They're going to knock on your door. And you may have been preparing for extra mouth to feed, to have extra people. You may have been preparing to get those bags, you know, those uh, go away bags, if you will, you know, a little bag with a little bit of food, this and that, that I, I encourage you to think really hard on that one because, um, I don't want you to be offended with what I'm about to say, but if you feed a dog once, it will come the next day. It's the same concept. So be mindful. If you do those go away bags, they may come for more. So now you have people coming to you trying to rely on you because you know often enough you hear well if something happens I know where to go and if you didn't set a boundary from the very beginning don't come to my house because I have nothing to give there may be an issue even if you set that boundary from the very beginning in an in a crisis or in an SHTF they're gonna remember hey Billy had preps and he was always, you know, concerned about having rice and beans and this and that. Wouldn't be a, a, a warm play of rice and beans good right now? Let's go over there. Let's knock on his door. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what he has and what he has going on. And maybe, maybe he will be willing to share. Now, they can knock at my door. Hey, Billy, you will, willing to share? No, I'm not willing to share. Now, they leave my house. Now, thinking of... Well, he didn't want to share, but he has it. Well, why he doesn't he share? I deserve to eat too. He's just being selfish. Uh, we just got to go back and take it. Screw him. Conflict. Conflict. And I'm telling you, it's going to happen more than none. And if this is something that honestly, you have to do what is right for you. And I would do what is right for me. When it comes to self-defense strategies, um, and again, this is me. This is not what you should do. This is what I would do. To me, having a 22 with subsonic ammo can be a great way to deter people. Why? Because you can barely hear it, and ain't nobody wants to get hit with that. Nobody. Nobody at all. Now, if it escalates, then we escalate. But you see what I'm saying? But you need to have that defensive strategy in place. And you need to 
come into a peace of mind that if it happens, it happens. And Lord willing, you get forgiven afterwards, you know, by the good Lord. But you're going to have to protect your family. You also need to start looking for signs of desperation on people. If you see people acting all twitchy around you and when they come into your place, you know, they're twitching as a, just looking around. I like to call them um, fan-like people. They're just, just going like this, just looking everywhere. Keep that in mind. That is not a good sign. That means that they're looking at everything you have all around, having a mental picture. And uh, yeah. If something happens, trust me, they will remember. Because when hunger strikes, man, they will remember that time that they throw away that burger. So what makes you think that they're not going to remember all of that rice and beans that you had in uh, buckets around your place? They will remember it. So you need to protect your supplies. You need to, you know, get your family and say, and, and you know, develop a plan flat out and you know be honest be honest this will happen sweetie um no offense to you but you know if somebody comes uh whether it's my family or yours they got to turn around and leave and you it don't matter how much you love them you have to do this because for years and years and years you told them all hey prepare as much as you can it does not take a lot you showed them what you were doing. You showed them how to do it and they refused to do it. It is on them. I will not sacrifice my immediate family for anybody else's mistake. You have to come to your spouse and have that conversation to your family members and have that really conversation that, you know, like hard conversation. If you don't prepare, you probably will die and there will be nothing that I will be able to do for you because if I do for you now, if I do for you now, and I didn't prepare for you, that means that I will be cutting my preparedness, and that is not fair to those who are under my roof. So you're going to have to consider that it's either them or you. And I, it's funny that I said this because I mentioned this to, to Mrs. D the other day, and I said, sweetie, no matter what, no matter what, everybody's always going to look for number one. And that number one is you. In your case, number one is you. And everybody else comes second. Because you have to look out for yourself first and then the person next to you, right? Well, that's what those people would do. They would look out for number one. That is them. They're hungry. Now they want your food. They want a place to stay warm. They want your house. They may want to just have a place that where they feel safe. That might be your place. And they will not hesitate to remove you out of the picture. So I want you all to be aware that during an SSTF, during a crisis, people will do unspeakable things. They will say even worse things. And it doesn't matter whether they are friends, neighbors, family, acquaintances. In fact, I venture to say of all of the, those that I have mentioned before, I venture to say that family will be the biggest dangers. And I know. I know a lot of people do disagree with me and a lot of people prepare for that particular event saying that, well, I prepare extra. That's good. If you do that, that is good. But if you can't, if you can't, you really have to get into that mindset that those people who share your blood might become your enemy. Simple enough, because if I'm to choose between feeding my son and feeding somebody else's son, I choose mine. With that being said, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Like I was rock on, prep on, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.